Welcome back to the channel. I'm Megan Yvonne if you're new. If you're returning, welcome back. If you are new here, welcome to the family. So today's video, I did more of a relaxed style type chit chat video where I talk about the viral sensation, the viral series, who the F did I marry? So if you're interested on my not so conventional thoughts about the whole saga that was Risa Tisa, go ahead and keep watching. I just want to take this time to have some commentary on the now viral Risa Tisa story. So initially, I hadn't really heard about it. And um, one of my friends was asking me had I like listened to it and all of that stuff. And I was like, no, I, you know, what is it? And so I did listen. And um, as she said, you know, I did it kind of like an audio book so that like you didn't have to sit down and watch her, you know, talking because she wasn't really showing anything. She was just talking about her experience, but she did it so that people could like listen to it as they were doing things. And that's what I did. But if you are unfamiliar with the story, it's about this woman who, uh, let's just call it what it is, was bamboozled by someone that she met and started dating, eventually married and divorced. Um, bamboozled because he lied about everything. He lied about who he was, what he did, what he had. And she admits that, oh, I just wanted it to be my turn. A part of me was not willing to wait. And so I know a lot of people will probably have commentary about it in the uh through the lens of like oh she was being so silly or oh that's why you know you need to know the man and you know all of these things like how they would have did things differently and you know all that and we all know through our own life experiences that hindsight is 2020 okay hindsight is 2020 of course we can all look back on our own experiences and things that have happened and say oh my gosh, like 2024 Megan would have never done the things that she did in 2013. You know, um, just because you are older and wiser and you know, you have a little bit more of an understanding of who you are and consequences of your actions and all of those things. But I want to approach this from the lens of grace. Because, um, and you know, like I watched a part, I didn't watch her live, like she has a playlist on her channel, but she discusses it apart in her live Q&A. She discusses how she just definitely, you know, she wanted to be, she wanted it to be her turn. She wanted, you know, things to move fast. And she thinks she, she knew, she knows now that she was in love with the idea of be happily ever after not necessarily the person but the idea and like that's what she wanted and like that she hasn't forgiven herself that she hasn't forgiven herself for um you know kind of just like rushing to get to the finish line right and i thought about that in terms of like a lot of things in life and you know how we treat god and you know, um, how we approach things. Like a lot of times we are anxious or we are so focused on getting to the finish line. I have to talk and do my makeup. <laughs> we are so focused on um, getting to the finish line that we don't, um, you know, we don't take time to enjoy the journey. We don't take time to go through the journey because the journey is necessary in building who we are and developing the traits and the things that we need in that next season but a lot of times we want to skip to the best part we want to skip that part we want to skip the hard parts we want to skip the waiting period we just want to get to the fun part so um with her i just i really think it's an opportunity instead of being like oh girl you were so dumb like how could you do that like you know Clearly, you know, and she admits like I ignored a lot of things because I wanted it to be my turn. And even when people around her raised some suspicions, she was like, 
I'm not trying to hear that. This is my man, my man, my man. And he says he's gonna do it. So like, yeah, you know, and I think not necessarily in, um, in the form of relationships, like, oh, you were dating somebody knowing that you were either incompatible or like just things weren't lining up. But I think we've all been there with situations in our life, you know, and again, relating this to God, like how you're like, you know, Lord, but I want it right now. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, make something shake. I'm going to go ahead and figure this out. You're taking too long and I want what I want now. And it doesn't seem like you're going to give it to me or you're not listening. So I'm going to take matters into my own hand. And I'm not going to even say nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, when you do that, things never go. <laughs> things never go the way that they're supposed to. And you end up causing yourself so much more drama and um, disruption and chaos in your life than what was necessary if you had simply just said, you know, God, I choose to wait on you. God, I choose to trust you because you know the desires of my heart. You know, um, you know the plans that I, I, I am trying to put in motion. But ultimately, I need to submit to your plan. And I think that's one of the hardest things about the human experience is not having control. Oh, we are seven minutes in, but not having control, not having control, and allowing something bigger than you to to take the reins and you know be in control we all want to be like yeah you know i i did this i did that but the reality is like a lot of things you wouldn't even be able to do or can do without uh the help of god without his mercy without his grace without his 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 hand in everything and you know if you've listened to the story um i will link it for you if you have a TikTok, and i'm probably sure there are some um creators on youtube who have either put <coughs> excuse me who have put a playlist together um with it but she talks about how when they first met they were going on they scheduled the date and her tire blew out on the way to the date and she you know she told him like hey you know like i'm gonna be late or i may not make it or whatever my tire blew out and he came and you know helped her with her tire and um you know paid to get her a tire and all that other stuff and how she was just so enamored by that so impressed by that but she's like in hindsight of course looking back she's like that was God telling her, you know, you don't need to go. <laughs> you don't have no business going. I was trying to prevent you from getting there. And yet, um, you still went. And it just reminded me of that song. I used to grow up um, hearing it all the time. My godmother, who was a director of the choir, she, um, it was a song, it's like, Oh, oh Lord, although I've said you're still calling my name. So uh, I don't know who the artist is, but you know, it's, it means like, you know, even when we try to do things our way and a, a lyric in the song is, um, you know, you're still calling my name. You're still calling me to you. Even when I'm like trying to do things my way, you know, and like, I think that's the biggest lesson or biggest takeaway we can have. I'm not going to say lesson, but the biggest takeaway that we can have from this is that, you know, even, even when we think like, oh, I know better, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this to move in and get, get things uh, situated. I'm going to help you out a little bit, like, and we make a mess of things. He can still turn that around. Um, and for our good, he can still use it for our good, even if we step out of, not to say there won't be consequences, but even though we stepped out of the will that he had for us, you know, he can still turn it around for our good. And I say that because like now she's had, or she's receiving like opportunities from, you know, some of the things that she talked about in the video, as far as like, she wanted this specific car, um, 
you know, and the manufacturers of the car, it was like a BMW type something. They have reached out to her and even her desire to go on a trip to Paris and London, um, some hotels have reached out to her. So even though she endured that, he's still working it out for her good. And then also, as far as, also as far as, you know, like the people who are like, girl, girl, and we can all admit, you know, you listen to the story if you have listened. You were like, I don't understand. But I also think that's how, you know, sometimes the things that are embarrassing or maybe humiliating or maybe, um, you know, like, ugh, to us can be used to um, elevate or to teach someone else, to help someone else and prevent them from going through it. And that's what she basically said. She was like, you know, for a lot of people who are asking, why are you putting your business out there, girl? Like, why are you doing this? And she's like, it's to help somebody else. You know, and there have been some other people who've come forward who were like, you know, he was trying to run that game on me or he did run that game on me. So yes, she was helping other women in the process but even for the ones who didn't encounter this specific person, she is helping them because it's like, okay, I need to be more, um, you know, I need to ask more questions, you know? And I heard a guy say one time, you know, that whole like, oh, don't ask any questions, be chill, just go with the flow. Like men created that vibe so that women would not ask any questions and they could get away with doing more for less or um, they could just get away with doing them. So I said all that to say is that she, although like a lot of judgment, a lot of, uh, you know, kind of ridicule came with it, I do believe her telling her story is gonna save, I'm not gonna even say some young girl, because everybody has different experiences with dating, but it's gonna save somebody some heartache and it's going to make them think twice and it, it could be confirmation for somebody. You know how sometimes you might be thinking something and then God uses people, places, and things. <laughs> he uses nouns um, to, to get your attention and you're like, okay, I see you God, I hear you, I hear you loud and clear, this is what you're trying to tell me, you know. Um, I got it, I get the message, I'm listening. You have my attention. So I do believe that her sharing her story so candidly, so vulnerably is going to uh, help, you know, someone out there and some women, some even some men, because but the reality is like, if someone is manipulating you or they like that's their MO, you know, it, they do that to everybody. So it's not just like specific to women because men get played too. And I just believe her story is going to um, help somebody and prevent them from experiencing, you know, those things or, you know, allow them to get out early enough or not even get into that situation. And when I say early enough, I'm like meaning like, it may like, okay, well, you know, come to think about it. Hmm, and two and two is not adding up. It's not making four, so hmm, let me do a little bit more investigating. Let me um, be a little bit more strategic and, you know, let me allow God to like guide me and give me the discernment that is necessary because, you know, although I want this, it, it's not. And she said she, they got married like January 5th. And by January 31st, she knew like, ugh, this ain't it. So um, I'm just taking some of my bronzer and I'm just kind of like cutting right here. Um, kind of like doing a semi cut crease, but not really, not really making it uh, pronounced. I'm using my lighter bronzer. Now I'm going in with my darker bronzer to do that. But what I was saying is that, you know, it. I think her story will help. It will help. It will help some women out there, some men out there. It will help some people out there just in general to be 
more cognizant of things and to ask questions, to be more discerning, to seek God and um, say like, you know, hey, does this person, I know like I want this, but is this person who you want for me? And, you know, seeing the aftermath of everything that she experienced from just, you know, like trying to do it my way because that's what I want versus like, is this what you want for me? Um, you know, it's, it's certain things, you know, like it's, it's a life experience for sure. And she talks about having PTSD being um, terrified, is her words, of dating, and rightfully so, um, because it's like, wow, like that someone could be so deceptive and so mischievous, so manipulative. And, you know, she, she I remember one point in her story, she said, she asked him like, why did you marry me? Like, we could have just continued to date or whatever but why did you want to marry me and he said well I knew that you wouldn't allow me you wouldn't be a girlfriend for no more than a year so like you know he had to propose he had to marry her and that's the thing like sometimes people can see the anointing or the things that you possess before you can realize them in yourself and you know even how the Bible talks about you know a man who findeth a wife, findeth a good thing. And the fact that, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I'm, you are a wife before, you are moving in that element before, if that's what God has ordained for your life. And sometimes, you know, of course, like people are like, oh, I desire your marriage, you know, but you are moving in those realms. And even if you are a teen, a teen girl who is dating, you know, men can recognize that and they can, they'll move accordingly. Um, they'll move accordingly. They'll move out your way. <laughs> and I'm saying that from experience. They'll move out your way. They'll like, oh, you know, just how she carries herself. She's not, she's not about to play these games with me. She, she's not about to do this. So let me just step on the side because, you know, she, she's not going to be playing with trifle with. And, you know, that was something that she brought up to you. Like, she knows that, you know, she had some kind of like self-esteem stuff and some, um, she was like some desperation that she wanted to get married. And, you know, she was looking at her timeline. And I'm like, God is a God of suddenly. And a lot of times we get so wrapped up in, oh, <laughs> it's not happening fast enough. You know, Lord, I need to, I need to do this, I need to do that, just to, to push the time forward. But he's the God of suddenly. So if he can do things immediately for you, like trust that, you know, he's already knit your life together. And when the time is right, and when you are, you are who you're supposed to be in that moment, he is going to like, he can make it happen just like that, but you have to be prepared for it. Um, so, you know, all in all, I just, when I think about things like that, it's just like, you have to be prepared for it. You have to be spiritually mature for it. And that's something that we don't talk about. Like a lot of times I think, and I'm not saying this, um, from the standpoint, this is just like a bright pink color. This is my Juvia's Place blush. But I think a lot of times, you know, growing up, especially girls, because, you know, it's like the bedtime stories are all fairy tales and I think they've done a better job now of having more books about women just growing up and following their dreams, following their uh, career passions and things like that. But prior to everything was, and she lived happily ever after. And she lived happily ever after. It was just like, you know, or she was a damsel in distress. And this man came along and he rescued her and she lived happily ever after. So. And she talks about this in her story, how she wanted to be the wife that um, her husband was buying her the luxury car and buying her the big house. And, you know, she wanted that. 
And it's nothing wrong. Let me get that. Let me make myself explicitly clear. It's nothing wrong with wanting that, um, you know, and having that as a, a, a standard, a goal. It's nothing wrong with wanting that. But I think we get into trouble where we start to idolize those things. And, um, you know, like if that's not what God says for your life, that's not what your life is going to be. But, you know, so many um people I think we've put we put that pressure on a lot of our um, women especially not not so much men I mean now like there's a joke of like passenger princes and you know soft life for men and this is that and the other but I think a lot of that pressure is put on women and you know kind of like if you're able to attain that then you must be one heck of a woman in order to do that like it's just uh it's boggling to me because like you know it to me it really boils down to if simply if god has that plan for your life because a lot of times like you might not even see that for yourself and that might be the plan he has for your life so things like that it, it comes together that way. I hope I'm making sense. I hope I'm not rambling and you guys are like, what is she talking about? So I'm just gonna take some brown liner and go. Just to kinda, yeah, I like that. It's not so pinky, but. But, like I said, we get into that realm of, you know, telling women to, you know, idolize those things. And that sometimes makes you rush into situations or stay into situations that you should have long said deuces to. So, um, yeah, so, you know, I'm not going to, I've talked to you guys heads so, off, but I really thought, like, there were definitely some lessons that could be learned and it was definitely uh, a teaching moment for a lot of us and causing us just as women in general, like me being a married woman, I try to be cognizant and mindful not to, when I'm talking to, you know, my unmarried friends, not to be like, oh, I have all the answers because I got married. Cause I don't, my life worked out that way. Um, you know, but it doesn't mean that like, oh, I'm such a guru or like, oh, because I did this, I got married and you didn't like, no, no. It was through and for, like through and by the grace of God. Like, you know, and I'm not saying I'm like, oh, like did I desire marriage? Yes, but I can't take credit and say like, oh, it was all me. Because it wasn't, it, it really wasn't. It was it was definitely God ordained timing because I tell people all the time, like I was not like, oh, I'm out here looking. I was minding my business, minding my business, okay? I was not out here like, I'm um, like, of course, when I was dating, I was, it was certain things that I'm like, okay, this is what I'm looking for in a husband. These are things that I am, I'm being strategic about it. But at the time I was not like, oh, I'm out here, you know, um, actively pursuing, pursuing, you know what I mean? Like I'm not out here actively trying to, to get hitched. I, I guess if that makes sense, so. You know, and that's what I said, like, but I think sometimes, you know, we put that pressure, like I said again, on women to like, oh, well, if you're not married, mm, girl, you must, something must be wrong with you. Or, you know, for men, it's different. It's like, oh, he's still a bachelor. You know, he's living his life. He's focused on his career, blase, blase. But for a woman, oh, you must be, something to deal with or you, something must be wrong with you. And I think that's just so unfair because a lot of times it's, it's the other way around. Like 
it's the women who got it together and it's it's like they don't want to just be with anyone or anything just for the sake of saying that I'm with someone. So I've gotten off on a very big tangent just talking about that but okay. so anyway we're going to add some lashes I don't know where my mascara has gone. We're gonna add some lashes. But more recently, I have used the, um, it's the Kiss and Press, I believe. Yeah, the Kiss and Press lashes. These are the Press and Go No Glue. I did a video on them a while ago, but I did a video with the ones that are, they were a different style. So I was just like, you know, while they were nice, I was just like, oh, they're okay. It's giving me your lash, but better. But I tried them in a different style and I absolutely love them. I will say like, I, I love the way lashes look, but I don't think I'll ever be a lash extension girly. And for the simple fact of like, I like to wash around my eyes and I just constantly felt like, uh, something is like, like I could feel it, something, you know, something is there. So, um, and then, you know, I've heard that like lash extensions like that aren't good if you kind of like sleep on your face and different things like that, cause they'll get messed up. And I can be somewhat of a wild sleeper. So that definitely poses um, some concern. So I, um, I, that, that's my only thing about them. Ooh, child. Let me go ahead and put my lashes on and then I'll come back and do a proper intro outro and I'll be back. Thank you so much for staying tuned to the end of this video. If you haven't already, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. It helps out my channel tremendously. So go ahead, pause this video, do that. Actually, you don't even have to pause it. Just go ahead and do that. If you're watching on your television, you can still hit the thumbs up button. I know you can't really comment if you're watching on the TV, but you can hit the thumbs up button and that really is helpful to my channel. Also, if you are new, go ahead and subscribe. I would love to have you on this journey with me. I would love to have you a part of the Megan Yvonne TV family. Over here, I share beauty and I share lifestyle content and inspirational content. So I would just love to have you a part of the journey with me. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. And comment down below. Let me know if you really enjoy content like this, if you really enjoy these more kind of chill, kind of talking about life stuff. You know, I've done it in the past with a couple of my other videos. I will link that for you below. But while you're here, go ahead and check out some other stuff too. I really appreciate the support that you guys have given me. So thank you so much. Make sure you have your post notifications on. Hit the bell button so you can be notified each and every time I upload. Like I discussed before, my videos, I'm going through a transition of when I'm posting. So my posting schedule is a little different right now. I'm just doing weekly, but we have some things cooking in March. So go ahead, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can be notified. And yeah, you can see what I have planned. So thank you so much once again, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Mwah! Bye!